Okay, so here we go. Um, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Oh no, wait. Huh. Okay, so um, this is the eBird app. Many of you have seen it. You have uh, what you have is a date that shows up, a time that shows up, and an option that says start checklist. But before any of you actually um, use the eBird app, you'll need to create an account, an eBird account. And uh, the moment you install the app, it will give you the option of doing that. So I won't go into that, but I'll tell you what to do after you install the account. After you install the account, and you click on the three bars on the side, you'll see an option that says uh, settings, right? So if you click on settings, you'll have options like common name, scientific name, and both. Um, it uh, depends upon what you want to see. Some parts of the world, they like looking at scientific names. Uh, in India, we generally like looking at common names. I like looking at both. So that's for you to choose. Uh, then you see something that's very important here, that's language. So show common names in. Uh, the default option will be English United States. Uh, please change it to English India because the names we use are a little different from uh, the names that are used elsewhere in the world. Um, examples are uh, something like Sykes Lark. We say Sykes Lark, right? But the official name is Tony Lark. Uh, do you have that in any part of West Bengal? Maybe not. Um, some other option, other possibilities are um, Mithil, any thoughts? Which are these ones? So uh, even the, uh, the way some words are spelled, like uh, grey neck bunting or grey pangolin, uh, the spellings uh, that we use in India are different than what is used in the uh, United States. Yeah, like grey wagtail is spelled with G-R-E-Y and in uh, the United States is G-R-A-Y. So it basically makes it a little easier for us. It's the names which we are used to. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I need to put off my... Okay, anyway. Uh, then um, you see an option that says subspecies uh, for data entry. You can, uh, I keep that on. That depends upon whether you want to see subspecies or not. And then you have an option that says shows, show distance in, uh, in India. We prefer kilometers, not miles. So choose that. And importantly, make your portal set your portal below to eBird India. Uh, all, of, all of you already use eBird. Uh, maybe you could just go through this to uh, see whether you've uh, enabled this. So if you've, if you've selected the portal eBird India, uh, all of this information is going to be contributed directly to the global uh, biodiversity information facility. Uh, and it counts towards India's biodiversity targets. So it's, um, it's an important thing to do. Okay. So going back here, uh, this is what we have. Again, if I click on those uh, three uh, lines on the side, <laughs> uh, you'll see an option that says packs. So the moment you install the eBird app, you'll get the option of packs. And uh, packs uh, is basically, uh, for India, we have a single pack. And that is what will be suggested for you. And you can install that. And that basically determines the bird list that you, you will see in any part of the country. Even if you do not have internet and uh, you start, a, start making a checklist in West Bengal, you will see a bird list that is specific to your part of the country, irrespective of whether you have internet or not. So it's a very important thing. And this is how the app functions at the moment. So you first install the pack. It's a one-time thing. I think it's about 12 MB. And then you can start uh, making checklists. Okay, so now how do you create a checklist? So let's say now um, 26 November 2020, uh, 1756, I click on start checklist. You see there's an option that says record track. You see that option? So that record track is on, which means that now when I make my checklist and I walk around, uh, it's going to record my track. And later on, if I go back and see, it will tell me where all I've gone during this birding session. Anyway, so I click on start checklist. And it shows me a list of birds. So now this list of birds, uh, remember I don't need internet. To start checklist, I do not need internet. Only to submit or to upload, I finally need internet. So let's say I've started the checklist now. There's a time which is running. Uh, there's a location which is selected and a bunch of species. Now these species, if you uh, start a checklist in your area, you will see a slightly different uh, set of species than what I see over here. Uh, because uh, there are the list of species that shows up 
is determined by a filter and this filter is different based on where in the country you are for example in your filter in west bengal you will not see things like uh, yellow bill babbler you're not going to see it in uh, the kolkata filter or you're not going to see something uh, a western ghats bird nilgiri wood pigeon you're not going to see that right uh, so that is what this list of birds is now when you see this list you see some that are uh, empty i mean some that do don't have any sign next to it and some that have this yellow uh, half uh, circle and then you see some that have a red circle so now this is an indication of whether that species is common here uh, or not so commonly seen or very very rare so the red species are ones that in this time of the year in your area it has not been reported at all so which means that if you ever see a red species and you want to enter it i mean a species with a red circle you might want to provide some notes or a photo or something like that so that that record will be will stand the test of time somebody looking at it 10 years later will say okay this species is rare over here but uh, this person has explained clearly why it is that species therefore i will believe it like that so a data set like this has a uh, um, something like that has more authenticity in the future okay so now you have uh, even for the yellow circles it's worth giving some uh, some sort of information so if you see house sparrow is infrequent in my area but i assume if uh, some of you are from kolkata house sparrow is actually quite common most in uh, many parts of the city if i remember right anyway so how do you enter how do you um, enter a species let's say i want to say i saw uh, five indian peafowl so i can do it in two ways i can go to indian peafowl on this list and i can do this i can click on it and put 1 2 3 4 5 click on the plus sign otherwise i can click on the bird and i can change the number i can make it 10 or 15 right i can also then this is the best way i can use the species codes to search so indian peafowl every species has a four letter uh, code or think of it as a four letter code three to four letter code so now i will put for indian peafowl i'm going to say i n p e i n p e is going to take me to indian peafowl and then i can put a number uh something like indian spot billed duck i s b d so it is if it's uh, four words it's going to be the first letter of each word if it's two words it's going to be the first two letters of both of, both of those words what if it's something with three words like spot breasted fantail that will be s b f is actually enough but s b f a is also fine is that clear but now you can enter these numbers even more easily so if i want to enter 10 indian peafowl or let's say not indian peafowl 10 grey francolin say then all i need to do is i need to put the number 10 grfr and then if i click on it i get 10 grey francolin directly uh let let me say i want to put uh, 25 greenish wobbler 25 grwa and i click on green or greenish wobbler greenish wobbler here it immediately becomes 25 greenish wobbler so now what do i have in my list i have two species i have 10 gray francolin 25 uh, greenish wobbler is that clear uh, now uh, what is a rare species so a rare species is something that will show up as rare actually so let me just uh, show you what that looks like so um, now i have Uh, a species like uh, let's say yellow browed wobbler yellow browed wobbler is i think common in parts of kolkata now right uh, so let me try putting yellow browed wobbler here it's going to show as rare so you see there's a r sign so rare means that if you enter it and upload it it will not immediately show up on the map it needs to be it needs to be uh, confirmed by a uh, reviewer in that the reviewer will take into account the evidence i put so for example if i'm uh, if yellow browed wobblers i report are automatically going to go on the map then there'll be a lot of scope for mistakes so instead what i will do when i'm reporting let's say i've seen a yellow browed wobbler and i and i hear it call uh, let's say i hear its typical call so i'll say i'll say heard typical c v call and then if i have recorded or photographed etc i can say recorded or photographed i will upload a uh, photo later if i have got good views of the bird i might want to say uh, have pale bill white edged turgils 
right? If if I have been able to see all that, only what I actually see on field, right? And uh, I say that um, uh, two clear wing bars. So in Kolkata, this was probably going to be enough to for a yellow broad wobbler to be accepted. In Bangalore, uh, also to be enough. But if I don't put the call, then it's not going to be enough because Hume's wobbler is the common related wobbler over here. So just an example of how notes are very important. You can of course put uh, uh, audio or uh, photographs, etc., on the website later. But for now, when you're putting on the app, you want to put as many field notes as possible. Is that clear? Uh, so then, uh, anyway, so this is uh, yellow brow wobbler, right? Uh, so this is rare. And then until you actually put some notes, right? It's not going to allow you to uh, submit. So heard CV call, I'm going to put again, done. So now I have three species on my list, okay? So now what happens if I try to submit it? So I need to stop the list. So if I stop it, it stops my track. But now I've been sitting in one place. So it will come as a, it will show up as stationary. Right? Uh, if you're actually walking around, it will automatically pick up some distance if your track is on. Otherwise, you want to put some distance and make it a traveling list. When would I use this option that is incidental? You see an incidental option. Incidental option is when you're not actually watching birds. Say that I'm sitting and uh, I'm, uh, I'm driving or something and I see an amazing bird, uh, uh, um, some uh, say a marsh harrier or something fly across me when I'm driving and I want to report it. Then what would I do? I would choose the incidental option. I would start a checklist, choose the incidental option and report a, a marsh harrier. So now um, you see the option of observers. If you have with multiple observers, you can share directly from here. So this is this uh, is the username of my wife. So I'll, uh, I can share it with that. Right. So now what I have here is uh, I'll make this stationary again. Uh, this option is very important here. Are you submitting a complete checklist of the birds you're able to identify? A complete checklist means when you're out birding, it's everything that you're seeing, including crows, miners, pigeons, everything, not just um, the good birds. So if you're going to see a ruby throat in uh, some part of West Bengal, uh, if you only report the ruby throat after watching, after your session, that means you should be clicking on no. But if you are reporting everything, right, then you need, you'll be choosing yes. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, please ask in the chat, uh, whether you have any doubts about this, but this is an extremely important part of you uploading a checklist, whether it is complete or not. Are you uploading a complete checklist or are you missing out some birds that you have actually seen, but you're not reporting? If you haven't seen it, then there is no need to report. Okay. So now let's say I'm putting uh, yes. Okay. Let's say that I was watching birds and only three things I saw, gray francolin, yellow broad wobbler and greenish wobbler. No crows, no miners, nothing. Then I'll click on continue. And when I click on continue, it will take me to uh, location. It will take me to um, choose a location. So now if you don't have internet, you cannot do this step. If you have internet, this is when you actually need to do this step. Otherwise you can leave it like that to uh, get to later. So I just hide it and the checklist is going to remain as an unsubmitted checklist. See, I have an unsubmitted checklist from yesterday also. So this is my unsubmitted un un uh, checklist from yesterday. These are all the birds. So I just kept it there because I wanted to add some comments and make some changes before uploading. So here, let's say today's checklist, uh, I'm going to click on review, continue and choose a location. I'll go to recent, my um, location is uh, called Tube House 4. So I will choose that. And that is my uh, home location. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to upload the checklist from here. Okay. So then now if I click on submit, it will get uploaded. I don't want to do that at the moment. Otherwise I'll have to delete it. So I'll, I'll uh, leave that for now. Uh, so uh, is that clear? This is how you may create a checklist and upload it. If there is a species that shows a red dot or something, provide some notes, provide some documentation that, uh, that gives more evidence for it being that, being that species. If it shows up as rare, again, provide detailed notes and documentation so that somebody looking at it many years down the line will know, uh, will be 
convinced that it was that uh, species. So now what happens if you upload a checklist? It goes into, let me just show you. So this is the eBird website, right? So on the eBird website, you have various options. You can also submit a checklist from the website, which follows a very similar pattern, right? You can again, here you choose your location and then you continue and then you do exactly the same thing. I won't take, I won't uh, take you through that. That's uh, quite straightforward. But again, on the eBird website, when you open it, you might first want to change your, if you're opening it for the first time, you might want to uh, modify your preferences. So you click on your name, wherever it is. And then you go to preferences. And uh, in preferences, you have the same options which you had on the uh, mobile. You have uh, common name translated to English India, scientific name English India, both English India. Uh, this is my name. Uh, and uh, there are various other options that you can choose and not choose. So you go through all that, uh, try out those options. But what will happen after you upload a checklist is you, it will be stored in your uh, in your My eBird. So if you go to My eBird, you'll get the entire summary of all the uh, checklists you've ever uploaded. How many species have you seen in 2020? How many in 2019? What are your latest checklists? Uh, you can see everything. How many have you shared with other people? Right? You can see all of that. And to see your checklist themselves, you go to ch click on checklist. And then here you have all your checklists. So now, now I want to see the latest checklist I uploaded, which is this. It's a, not the most spectacular one, but it's a nice one from home. Some pigeons, green beetle, large bill crow, etc., etc. So this is the checklist, right? Remember that the app is only to upload checklists. So if you, if you change your phone, if you delete the app and reinstall it, you do all of that, you lose everything that was on the app. But anything that you have uploaded, anything that you have submitted on from the phone, everything is going to be there on the website. So the website is where you can see everything. The phone is only to uh, only an interface to actually upload that checklist, right? So now I've uploaded that uh, checklist. Uh, let me just show you how to uh, put media. So here, this is the checklist I have with media. So now after you've submitted your checklist, you can add uh, media. So you can click on, if you don't have any media that is added, you'll have an option that says add media. Now that I've already added some media, I have an option that says manage media. So it's going to give me a page like this and I can drag and drop any photo I want to the correct species, right? Uh, many of you are going to already know this, but uh, this is where, so if you've seen a rare species like yellow broad wobbler at my house, I will uh, later on go and I will upload the call recording using add media. Is that clear? What you see over here is the track. And this is visible, remember, only to yourself. So if somebody else looks at my checklist, you're not going to be able to see the track, which is a, a privacy issue. I don't want, for example, people to see where I'm going around in around my house. I want to see myself. So it's an important, that's why it's only visible to yourself and the shared bird watchers. So you can, uh, you can maximize this and you can see where you're watching birds. You can zoom in. This is my usual track around the campus near my house. So um, this is how it is. And